guys are, you better be prepared to play against this one quite a bit. I think it will be the most popular deck in the room. I guess possibly Burn will be more popular as a budget option, but of people with access to dual lands and all that kind of stuff, I think this will be the most popular deck in some form or another. Well, players waiting for the green light here. As we have been informed as well for our modern Premier IQ, Jeskai Ascendancy combo is in the finals. Finally. Finally is right. That deck is way too good not to be over there. He, can pl he complained that he only won on turn two once. Ah, you don't know Bobby that well. That's normal. <laughs> Players will start off with Flooded Strands. New versus old is here as a island and a passing of the turn. No uh, no creatures to start here for Rice. A little bit slow out of the gate. Probably a cantrip at Dense Hand here, I would uh, assume. An island here for Briska as well. Players mimicking each other. Rice will sacrifice his Flooded Strand, go searching, and we'll see what he does fine here. Probably a volcanic island since not really, you know, a wasteland matchup. Now keep in mind against Blue Red Delver. One of the best cards, it sounds simple to say, but one of the best cards to attack this deck is Stoneforge Mystic. Absolutely. Batter Skull and Umazawa Jite, both very hard for this deck to beat. This puts the pressure on. That's the big deal. Let's see what Rice is up to on this turn. Swift Spear. That's a good way to break the parity. Scary threat. Looks like Briska has a brainstorm, considering casting right now. I would be surprised if Rudy fought over the Swift Spear when he has Stoneforge Mystic lined up. There's the attack from one. And here is a brainstorm. Today's wants him to crack the fetch land. All right. Willing to give up the days at this point to try to convert this brainstorm and just into just draw a card. Yep. You don't see that play very often. I do wonder how often that play is actually correct. I think it's probably a better play than people give it credit for. I think once Treasure Cruise is in the deck, you can afford to be pretty liberal with how you fire off some of the soft counter spells. Okay, that makes sense. You just want to fill up your graveyard as fast as possible. Lightning Bolt among the cards that have been found here. You see a mountain and a volcanic guy. It looks like they're... Going on top, Brixel will draw a card. It's a mountain. It's got all three colors. Where's the Mantis Rider? Guess not here. Stoneforge Mystic instead. Force of Will says no. We're moving a treasure cruise. Will he fight back? He will. Force of Will, removing a treasure cruise. Okay then. Stoneforge is going to resolve now. There's Battered Skull. I think that Rudy may have been better served that turn using a fetch land because if the Stoneforge Mystic did not resolve, he would have been stuck drawing a needless land la th the following turn. There's a lightning bolt to go after the Swift Spear. It's a little risky. It's a 2 3 right now. If you played a spell, you could save it, but good to go. Volcanic, lightning bolt. See you later, Stoneforge. Pass the turn back, a little rice. Council's Judgment, there is a Flooded Strand, and back to Rice will go. Rudy in a position, though, to just hard cast his Batter Skull. I've seen it before. Rice just passes the turn back. Interested to see how much patience really want, Rudy wants to display. I think casting it right now into the face of something like Daze is unacceptable, given how land-heavy his hand is. But at some point, he will have to take a bit of a chance here getting it into play. Yeah, I think casting it, as you mentioned, face of days is probably a little bit unnecessary. Here's a price of progress. Well, he's going to sacrifice both of those lands. There's two copies of that card in Jared's list here. Sure. Briscoe going basic hunting. His deck is armed with a lot of basics, that's for sure. Yeah, three islands, two planes, and a mountain. So he's able to search up what he needs, take nothing from price of progress outside of the fetch lands, dealing a little bit of pain. So we're going to go Rice's way now. Again, just no clock out here. Again, you know, this is a deck that does have 12 creatures, but he just has to be able to find any, really. 
Yep. It's a slow out of the gates. And once you get to this stage of the game, Rudy's got a huge edge. There's a brainstorm. Two cards will have to have to go back, excuse me, for Jared. Once you get past turn three or so without too much damage being done, I'll take the deck with Jace and Batter Skull over the deck with Monastery Swift Spear. Bold. Treasure very, very bold, good sir. Well, Treasure Cruise has the possibility of making it a little bit different. Jared can hang, but Rudy has some of that elements himself, so. I suppose that's true. Arid Mesa. Sacrifice this, make it a good brainstorm. And that Cruz is, uh, that's RFG. Gonna get a mountain out of his deck. Don't see a mountain all the time in this deck. Some players have one, some players don't. Glenn Jones had one last week, for example, when we were in Oakland. And I believe he said afterwards that he felt it was overall bad to have in the deck. Yeah, I don't think he was a big fan of it afterward. Makes a little bit more sense in Jared's list because he is playing with main deck Price of Progress. So he's more inclined to go basic searching. Well, when they go reaching for the graveyard and do this, I think we all know what this is. Rudy wants to know, okay, what are you removing? Because I know you're about to draw three, or at least attempt to. So there's a the treasure cruise. Good to go. Three cards coming here for Jared. And now, Swifty. Beat down, get you for one. Rudy will draw a card. Copy a dig through time. Looks like it's going to be a council's judgment. Get this off the table, or at least try to. That'll work. A lot of cards down there in the graveyard. Dig will be easy to cast. Curious to see if Rudy wants to do this now or later. I'm okay with waiting. I, think, I don't think he knows what he wants to find. Exactly. Information seems valuable to Rudy at this point. And Jared hasn't presented anything at this point to say, I need to dig through this particular card. Uh, he will cast it. There are the six cards that are removed. So if I look at the top seven, of course, select two, assuming this resolves. Looks like Rice is going to think about this for a little bit. He's aware of the batter skull. Mm -hmm. I think he may have forcible in hand. Yep. But then he's got to find a way to beat batter skull, which is going to be challenging. It's very tough for this deck to do. Vendillion click the draw. And I like casting this right now. Put on spell pierce and daze and all that stuff. So there is batter skull. There's Nared Mesa. Just going to pass the turn back. And it looks like it might be a runaway with the living equipment. In for four. Bricks it up to 18, Rice down to 10. And from this spot, there's no real any catching up here. There's a Delver of Secrets. A little late to the party. Vendillion click. See who it targets here in just a sec. It'll be a Lightning Bolt that's going to take care of that. Wants to see the cards, Golden Tarn. You can keep that one. Can't take it anyway. Getcha. 22 to 6. And to me, this game is a lot about Rudy having dig through time. Access to something that forced Jared's hand on the counter spell. Oh, for sure. Though I think that Jared still probably needed to just let it resolve. Because this battered skull is game over. Yeah, this is the real problem. Again, Blue Red Delver has some real issues with this card. Days will be the draw. Let's reveal to Delver. Now here's the source of Plowshares. Kill the Delver. Get a little bit of info. Give him a little more life, but he's in the driver's seat, and Jason puts it even further into the driver's seat. Because now it's time to go sculpting the mind. And here it says, I decline. Rudy Briscoe getting to win at game number one here against Jared Rice. Jeskai Stoneblade up a game over Blue Red Delver. As we'll bring it back to the booth. It is trivia time. I've got the rules. Patrick has a question. Rules are simple. You get your Twitters open. Use the hashtag with hashtag SCG Premium. Make sure you're following at SCG Live. Six-month giveaway. Winner announced at the conclusion of our semifinal round. And as usual, all contests and giveaways here on SCG Live with the sole discretion of Star City Games. Twitch.tv is in no way affiliated with our contest or giveaways, though we do thank them for allowing us to broadcast on their fantastic network. So Grand Prix New Jersey is not just about the main event. We're going to be covering the main event, of course. But we line up all sorts of other things for the event. 
among those are artists. And we are very excited to bring a special guest of honor all the way from England to sign up the show. Can you name that artist? I think they can. I think they can too. I, I have faith. Can. If you can, hashtag the answer at hashtag SCG Premium. Make sure you're following an SCG Live and we'll announce the winner at the conclusion of our semifinal round. See if anyone can beat Rudy. Goodness. Untouched. Yeah. And I think, it. And, you know, not to look too far ahead, but I think either matchup waiting for him in the finals will be solid. I think so, too. Yep. I think so, too. It looks like he's doing okay against Blue Red Delver. Take a look at the sideboards here. Jared Rice, two like Trickery, two Mizium Skin, two Blood Moon, two Smash the Smithereens, two Coppice the Fluster Storm, then five Singletons in Graph Digger's Cage, a Red Elemental Blast, Oppressive Progress, a Sulfuric Vortex, and a Pithy Needle. I like the needle a lot, as it can answer Stoneforge Mystic, Jace the Mind Sculptor, and some other equipment at various points. The Sylvuric Vortex, very solid against Rudy's list, as we can note back from last round, Rudy without wear tear, it's hard for him to get non-creature permanents off the table, and Vortex is just generally good against control decks. I like the Red Elemental Blast, I think the two Fluster Storms are fine, good but not great, and the two Smash the Smithereens, I really want if I'm Jared, because Rudy's equipment is enemy number one. Other side of things, and we saw this last round we watched Briska play. He's got all these ones and twos. Which of the, which of these do you like, if any? Well, I really, really like a Bane Slayer Angel. Kaboom! I think Core Firewalker can do very good work in this matchup. Same is true of Blue Elemental Blast and Red Elemental Blast. The Pyroclasm and the Supreme Verdict, all excellent. Great options for Rudy here. The trick is just don't die. The the one concern I have with Rudy's deck in this matchup is. Not a lot of answers to Sulfuric Vortex. There's only one in Jared's sideboard, so it's it's unlikely to come up. But uh, without enchantment removal, just a couple blue blasts, he has to, he can have some counter spells for it. He has his Council's Judgment, but it's going to be a problematic card if it if it rears its head. All right. Well, we'll see how things do go. Check another match here. It looks like Brandon Hulings is up a game here over Kazu Negri. I do think it's a very difficult matchup for Elves. I, I think that if you know the two Fort Bolts were say Chain Lightnings. Maybe Elves would have a real shot in the matchup, but Fort Bolt is so punishing. Though Elves, I think, will still be a popular deck of the Grand Prix next weekend. For sure. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of fun to play, and it's a very powerful deck. Yeah. But I, I do worry about its place in the metagame right now, because these Blue-Red Delver decks are... feels like Elves is way behind. Yeah, I agree. These Blue-Red Delver decks are just way ahead against a lot of stuff. It's a really good deck. Yes, it is. And it is certainly on the map now. I don't think it's going anywhere for a while. Because I don't think Treasure Cruise is going anywhere. Not much of a reason for it to. Good card, but I don't think. You know, there's some conversation about maybe this card needs to be banned in some particular formats or anything. I think let's give players some time to adjust. Well, I, Modern is a different animal than Legacy. Sure. I think Wizards has to be a lot more active. They set up an expectation for bannings when things get out of line. And it's a PTQ format, so they have to be a little more concerned with overall format health. So if they're aggressive in addressing Treasure Cruise or Dig Through Time or Just Guy Ascendancy, what have you, I think that is all well and good. I think in Legacy, the burden of proof needed to ban cards is much higher, much higher than it is in Modern. And I think that what we have right now is nothing that warrants action. Yeah, just a good card at this point. I haven't seen anything too crazy with it just yet, but maybe we will get there. We'll see. Another thing to keep in mind here, you look at Jared's list and you look at a lot of these Blue Red Delver lists. They had to make room for Treasure Cruise somehow. Sure. They're not playing 64 cards, they had to cut something. Sure. The card in this list that is most frequently removed is Spell Pierce. People are just playing Days and Force Away right now. So if you want to capitalize on these decks, it is, I believe it is worth exploring decks that are weak to Spell Pierce, generally speaking, mm -hmm. that kill before Treasure Cruise can be online. Okay. Because I think the Delver matchup has gotten the the Delver side of those matchups, like Storm, like Char Belcher, have gotten worse because they have less permission and they've replaced it with a card drawing spell that they can't resolve before the game's over. Or if they are resolving it, the Delver deck already won ages ago because they blunted the draw and now it's incidental wrap up. Sure. And that makes sense. That does make sense. I see behind Rudy, the Boz. The Boz has such a presence when he stands behind I know. someone. This is the first time. Now, what, I'll tell you why Boston have a good weekend. It's pretty simple. He's got sleeves on. I know. So bad. Yeah, talk to him about that. The results speak for themselves. No sleeves, W's. And we mean sleeves on the shirt, of not course. on the deck. Yeah, of course. The good people at Toy Wolves will have to have a conversation with their guy. I know. We know what he can do without sleeves. It's nasty. 
Boswell's a good looking man, you know, just share it with the world. Absolutely. No one will begrudge you. Relic of Progenda is going to come into play here. Delver's Secrets for Jared Rice was the start. And this is the, you know, 101 class on Fighting Treasure Cruise. This is the easiest card to add to your deck. Low opportunity cost because it cycles. And if you draw it early, can really keep someone off of Treasure Cruise for the whole game. Checking with Delver, are we? I suppose we'll brainstorm first, make sure it does flip. Force of Will would have been the draw, so Delver would have flipped, but Jared wanted to make sure that it'll flip. So two cards are going to go back, and then he will draw what he reveals. This game, he actually has pressure. Last game, he did not. Though, now that Treasure Cruise is probably cut off for the entire game, things are getting a lot harder for Jared, because he has to win with the tempo draw instead of being able to go longer with Rudy. And losing that dimension of the deck is painful. Force of will was the draw. Mountain going to come into play. So Rice knew those cards. And he'll use them to his advantage. Perhaps it's time to get a little bit swifty. He also has a copy of Young Pyromancer in hand, too. So I can't cast that one yet this turn. but he will get Swifty. And is Rudy contemplating picking a fight here? Wow. He does have a Force and a Brainstorm. Other cards are Stoneforge Mystic, but instead, yep, yeah, he just says, I'll take the damage. Again, with Stoneforge in hand, I'm always happy to try to pick the fight over Stoneforge Mystic, because that's the real prize. Yeah. There is Stoneforge. That's going to resolve. You know, Brisk could draw the Batter Skull this turn, so... Umzawa's GT will be added to the grip. And we might see that old chestnut where someone goes and gets the GT with the Batter Skull already in hand. Mm -hmm. Someone attacks, assuming Batter Skull is not there. And then instant speed germ token. Rice going to draw a card here. Arid Mace added to the grip. And see, so he does have a copy of Force Will in his hand. I think the big problem here is that he may not have a blue card. There's another Swift Spear. Now there's the Mesa. And I think that Jared might be playing here towards a Pithy Needle. Oh, perhaps. And I think that's worth a fight here on Rudy's side yeah. because he's under so much pressure. I think he really, really needs Stoneforge Mystic to live for this turn so he can slide Batter Skull in. It's so hard for this Blue Red Delver deck to beat it. There is a needle there. And it will be cast. Bricks uh, will force a moving a brainstorm. I can't forget about the prowess triggers there on the monastery Swiss spears. It's a lot of damage coming through. Yes, it certainly is. But this is all leading to a place where Jared may have no choice but to attack, he may assume the coast is clear because of no batter skull. And then turns out that Batter Skull's in the hand. I'll tell you, Pyroblast is a big draw here. Shoot the Delver out of the sky. Slow down the clock. Sacrifice the Flooded Strand. I feel like you probably have to do it now. Because a lot can go wrong if you don't. And this could get a little risky here. See if this is probably young pyromancer. Yep. There's the attack. Sacrifice that. Now, if he has a lightning bolt here, yeah, it's a disaster. That's why I think you have to sacrifice the fetch line right away. It doesn't look like Rice actually has one. There is nothing to be gained by waiting. Yeah. He's certainly averted disaster. This could have been really bad. Now it ends up being really, really good for Rudy. Batter Skull comes in. It's going to eat the monastery Swiss spear. He's going to gain more than he loses. And then he gets to attack with that thing. I think that Rudy is a pretty solid player overall. But this is by far the biggest hole in his game. Is I think that he waits till the last possible second to cast instants and exposes himself to some pretty needless risk as a result. And as you said right there, if Jared had ripped Lightning Bolt, the game might just collapse for Rudy in a spot where there's really no reason for that to happen. 
Batter skull's gonna come in. Bris are gonna gain four. Looks like Rice is going to lose four. I'm just gonna pass the turn back. The ability to just slide a GTA in. You see Rudy's hand, he does have the GTA, a true nemesis, and the beautiful Bane Slayer Angel. An activation of Stone Forge. That'll put the GTA into play. Quickly on tap and draw. Scalding Tarn's gonna come in, activate this, remove that, equip here, swing there. And that's gonna do it. Rudy Briscoe gonna win this match over Jared Rice. Two games to zero, and he is moving on to the finals, where we will see who he's gonna play against between Brandon Holings and Kazu Negri. Hulings up a game right now with Blue Red Delfer. Negri playing Combo Elves.